Welcome, everyone, to another podcast episode of Talking College with John Dragone. And, of course, I'm your host, John. I'm coming to you from the studios of FingerLakes1.com in beautiful Seneca Falls, New York. This podcast episode and the many others that I've done up to this point can be viewed at www.fingerlakes, and then the number one, dot com as well as on YouTube. And um, we've got a really good show planned for you today. And the title of the show is, What's Great About Community Colleges? So uh, we have a couple of special guests here who uh, are from Finger Lakes Community College, Community College, whose main campus is located in Canandaigua, New York. And they're here today to tell us what's great about community colleges in general, not just about Finger Lakes Community College. All right, so we're not here to focus specifically on their institution. Um, and they're going to talk about why choosing to attend a community college can be a very, very smart decision for a wide range of, of students. So at this point, I would like to welcome our two guests. And first, we have Mahegan Murphy. And Mahegan, hello, Mahegan, welcome. And uh, Mahegan is the, boy, she's got a lot of stuff that she's in charge of over there at Finger Lakes. She's the Director of Academic Advising, Career and Transfer Services at Finger Lakes Community College. And Mahegan earned her bachelor's degree from Oswego State University in human development and also holds a master's degree in higher education administration from Syracuse University. And uh, Mahegan has worked in academic advising and first year programs for most of her 15 year career in higher education. She's a member of the National Academic Advising Association and has presented at both the regional and nat national conferences on best practices for advising community college students. Mahegan's born and raised in the Finger Lakes region of New York State and loves exploring her neighborhood. So welcome, Mahegan. We appreciate your being here today. And also with us today is Matt Stever. And yeah. Matt is the Director of Admissions at Finger Lakes Community College, and he's a graduate of SUNY, State University of New York, Broome, as well as Oswego State University, where he earned his AS and BS in Business Administration. He holds an MBA in Marketing and Management as well. Matt's worked in Enrollment Management for over 20 years, including roles at Hartwick College, Albany College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, as well as at Rochester Institute of Technology. Matt served in leadership roles for numerous higher education groups, including New York State graduate admissions professionals and Rochester area colleges continuing education. Outside of work, Matt's an avid hiker, snowboarder, and golfer. I'd like to welcome Matt to today's podcast. Thank you, John. Good to be here. Okay. Hello. Hello, Matt. Good to see you, and thanks again for you know helping us out here today and serving as a guest. So I want to begin by just mentioning that um, I spent four years myself as an assistant director of admissions and financial aid at a community college, and so I had the opportunity during those four years to have a or get a first-hand look at all of the great, and I want to emphasize the word great, things that are happening at community colleges. Subsequent to working at a community college, I worked with uh, around 2,000 or so college-bound high school students over a period of about three decades in my roles as a school counselor and in my private practice. So. I decided to do this particular podcast, which focuses on what's great about community colleges, to offer our viewers a true, a true look 
at what community colleges can offer and to correct some of the misconceptions out, that are out there that surround community colleges. So with that being said, as the background uh, to this podcast, I'd like to just get right into it with our guests, uh, Matt and Mahegan. So, Matt and Mahegan, I have some questions here for you, and uh, uh, I'm going to kind of let you manage amongst the two of you who's going to go first to answer them and who's going to go second and so forth here. Okay, so my first question is this. Nationally, tuition and fees at a, at a community college average one-half of those costs at public four-year colleges and one-eighth of private four-year colleges. And my question is this, how is it that community colleges are able to offer an education at such a low cost? I think I'll jump in on that one first. Okay, if you don't thanks mind. Matt, sure. Um, so, you know, I think one thing that we'd like to make clear is that central to our mission as a community college is to provide access to affordable education. That's the core of what we do as a community college. We're able to do this in part based on our funding model, which is different than other types of schools. So we have multiple revenue streams. We have a county-based funding, we've got state-based funding, and then we have tuition dollars. So we're lucky that we've got multiple buckets where we pull together our revenue for our operating budget that allows for more consistent budgeting on a year-to-year -year basis. When you look at private schools, they are primarily driven by tuition dollars. So there's also fundraising and things like that, but the largest by far influencer on the operating budget is gonna be tuition. That is different from year to year. And as you see over time, if you get a situation where a school has low enrollment a couple years in a row, they're forced to raise tuition. And they're forced to do it just to cover the cost of providing an education. So it's different at a community college. It's more stable. And for all of those branches of a revenue stream, we're able to keep that consistent cost and what we offer our students on an annual basis. Okay, it makes sense. Uh, and I think that's important for, for people to know that. Uh, you know, I used to always get that question, you know, how can one school be, you know, $70,000 a year and a community college be a tiny, tiny fraction of that. So thank you, Matt, for that information. Now, another thing is this, that, um, you know, I found during my career, again, in working with high school students and their parents, that there's this misconception out there, and I'd like, you know, I'd like you guys to uh, address it. The misconception is this, low cost equals there must be something wrong with this college, okay? Because when they look at this, the price tag, they think, gee, this is almost too good to be true. Got to be something you know, wrong there with this school. And the other misconception is, on the other end of the scale, high cost equals this college offers a high quality education, which we all know that in some cases that might be true, and in other cases, it might not be true. So I'm just curious, what are your thoughts on that when I, when I mentioned those two misconceptions? What, what, what are you thinking? And initially, we could probably spend a whole podcast just talking about <laughs> that topic. <laughs> I believe it, yeah. So I mean, in looking at that with my experience over two decades now being at private school and public school, um, this has changed. And it's the change of thought has hastened you know, recently. Um, and really, it's less about cost, which sounds crazy, but it's more about value. So parents and students, we've really seen a shift in the way they talk about it. So it's not that old adage, you know, when I was working in private schools, there were schools that actually raised their tuition so they can look like they were more prestigious and they use it as a recruitment tool. You will never hear that now. Um, and actually those private schools with a higher price tag, they're offering deep discounts and scholarships. And they've kind of put themselves in trouble because their operating budget can't keep up with how much they're discounting the tuition rate for students. So for us, we're in a good position because students are averse to taking on debt. You know, student loans have become a political issue. 
So it's very important that students consider what's the risk reward on how much they're going to spend on education. So that adage of cheap means not good, expensive means good, um, that equation has really gone out the window recently. Um, and it seems to be picking up steam every year as we talk mm -hmm. with parents and what we see on the street. I mean, luckily, we are fortunate that we work and we serve students in New York State, um, where the SUNY system has a tremendous reputation for value and quality at both the community college level and the four-year level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I just want to kind of follow up with something there. When you mentioned that um, many of the private colleges, you know, have these super high um, sticker prices, all right? And, you know, I see this time and time again where a student will be all excited and come to me and say, gee, I got a $20,000 scholarship to XYZ University. And then in the next breath they say, yeah, but I still have to come up with forty dollars or $50,000 a year out of pocket. So... Yeah, so, um, you know, when you talk about that price discounting, yes, you know, they might be starting out at 70 and, you know, making it look like, you know, gee, we're going to give you this big chunk of money. But again, the end result oftentimes is the amount out of pocket is still, you know, still far exceeds anything you'd normally see at a, a community college or at a, a four-year uh, state school. Okay. Um, Next thing I want to mention is this, and again, this is another misconception, you know, and unfortunately, and again, this is one of the reasons why I chose to do this particular uh, podcast, there, first of all, I, admittedly, I'm a lover and a big fan of community colleges, all right, and when I see the, the misconceptions that are floating around out there, um, it's really frustrating for me uh, to, you know, to, to kind of hear what people believe and much of it is not true. So this is another, you know, thing that kind of goes back to a misconception. All right, during my years of experience in working, you know, with, with high school students, um, I find that the impression that many of them have is that there's really only two reasons why a student would ever pick a community college. One of them, of course, is low cost, and the other one is close proximity to home. Okay, so when you hear that, you know, knowing, you know, as insiders at a community college, what really goes on, what's your reaction to hearing students believe that those are the only two reasons why a student might go to a community college. So I would, uh, I would say those are good reasons, right? And so those are certainly true. And I think to Matt's point, uh, when we think about a community college education, we're really thinking about the value of that community college education and, and what it offers. Um, and so those classes that students take here at, at that, that cost, many of those classes are the same classes that they're going to take or would need to take in their first first year or second year at that four-year institution, you know, if that's, if that's their plan eventually to transfer. So cost is certainly a factor. Um, and, I, and I think about this a lot when I work with students and I work with them when they're brand new and, and they're starting out. You know, 80% of students will change their major at least once. Um, most students will change it three times before they finish that bachelor's degree. And so when we talk about value and cost um, and investment, that investment is much less risky um, when that dollar sign uh, is a little different at a community college. So it provides an opportunity for students to get experience being a student, to make sure that they're in the right major or right path. We change majors every day in our office, it's totally normal, but it provides students and parents an opportunity to ensure that their student is college ready and college bound. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets, uh, gets an opportunity to try things out. So students come in, with one expectation about their career path and they enter our classroom and they come up with a whole new idea um, and sometimes good reasons and bad reasons um, or sometimes their expectations right about what being a business major may be all about and students change their major and that's very normal um, so community colleges provide students an opportunity to explore 
Um, they're getting that rich education that, that it's really paralleling what you might get when you transfer to that four-year institution. But we're ensuring when you leave us, you are in that right major or in that right career path to go on um, to get a bachelor's degree. And so we, we make sure that those students are prepared academically in the classroom and also help them navigate being a college student. So at a community college, you will see a lot of support services to help students transition. So we say a lot in advising, we help students figure out how to college. So there's what goes on in the classroom, right? I'm never gonna tutor a student in math, but I am gonna help them understand the resources and supports uh, that come with being a college student and come with being a student here um, on our campus. I would also add, I think to Matt's point about SUNY schools having a great reputation and our community colleges. In New York State, a lot of our community colleges offer residence halls um, or dorms that we probably called, uh, called them when we were students. And so in some ways, students get to kind of try out being a college student. Um, they get that great value. They get to parallel what that first year experience might be like at a four-year institution, um, but with some less risk involved because maybe you are um, just an hour away. It's not unusual for students on our campus to be from local school districts or from the Rochester area, um, and also from downstate or out of state because we offer programs that are specific to our campus. So um, you can come and live and learn on our campus and get that value, right? Get that experience um, without having to commit to being an engineering major, right? You get to come here and try that out and see if that's for you so that when you do go on, um, you're, you're more prepared um, to do that. And I think that that is, um, an opportunity and a benefit from starting out at a community college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, one of the things I see in, in in my practice is, again, and it's you know, some of this reflecting on some of the same stuff you just said, is that you know these students, a lot of them, you know, feel as though, gee, I have to go to a four-year school right out of high school. All right, and like you said. There, there's two groups of students when they leave high school. There's a big chunk of students who enter the four-year college as undeclared majors or undecided majors. And then, of course, there's, you know, another whole group of students that say, oh, I know exactly what I want to be, all right, in terms of a, a career. And then, like you said, you know, within one semester or two semesters, you know, what they thought they wanted to be changes and there's no guarantee you know if they change their major that the college the four-year college they started out in is even going to have their chosen major right so then they'd have to pack up and transfer out out of their their four-year schools and not to mention the financial um, aspect of that whole thing so if you're an undecided student um, a community college is a fantastic opportunity and like you said Mahegan with very low risk all right so I think that's very um, you know very important and uh, you know one one thing I want to mention too I always would tell my students this if you go to a two-year school two-year community college for two years and you complete all of the requirements for the two-year associates degree and you decide that's it. I don't want to go on any further. At that point, you're a college graduate because you hold an associate's degree. But what happens if you go to a four-year school for two years and you decide, gee, I don't want to go on uh, any further beyond my two years? What are you when you leave a four-year college after two years? You're a college dropout. Okay, so there's you know a lot of good reasons to. Um, you know, to, to choose a, a community college. And, you know, uh, what, what about the, uh, the, the positive aspects that the community colleges offer in terms of, let's say, class sizes? Um, you know, also in terms of having actual professors who are going to teach you in class rather than having teaching assistants or graduate assistants. Um, you know, a lot of the four-year colleges expect their professors to spend a lot of their time doing research uh, and publishing. Can you talk about how community colleges differ from, you know, some four-year schools in those particular respects? 
Yeah, absolutely. So you will accept, uh, expect a small class size. So um, certainly from my experience at a larger institution, you know, I did have those lecture halls with hundreds of students, right? And the professor would never have the opportunity to know my name, right? And that's right. totally fine. That's how that operates. Um, <clears throat> You're not going to find that at a community college. So your professors will quickly know your name. You will be in a classroom. Um, you know, sometimes our sizes range from eight to, to 20. Um, I mean, that's pretty small one on one with a faculty member who um, who may have a PhD, right, or who may have worked in that field or who still works in the field, right, experts in the area of expertise. And, and they're there to teach, right? They don't have any secondary expectations with research or, or anything along those lines. So they're really here to, to educate our students. That's their first goal. And so, uh, and you'll find that at, at any community college that that is, that certainly is the case. And, you know, many of those uh, faculty members may teach at four-year institution. So when you talk mm -hmm. about that cost or the value, um, you know, when you get that education at a community college, that sticker price is certainly gonna be smaller um, than if you went down the road and took you know, took that similar course um, at a four-year institution, especially in those first two years when those classes tend to be somewhat the same, right? So when you start off at a community college, you know, the benefit of finishing, you know, ideally those first two years towards a bachelor's degree. And I think to your point, John, finishing that associate's degree, that never goes away. Right. Uh, we stress that a lot with our students who are unsure um, about what they want to do. You finish with an associate's degree, that's it's never going to go away, right? Those, those Mm -hmm. Credits will not expire. You you have a college degree. That's a big deal. Um, but it's not the same if you go to a bachelor's degree and decide after two years or even a year, right, that that's not for you. Um, and so there's there's real a real benefit to that as well. And so getting that one-on-one -on -one experience in a classroom of small sizes also prepares students better when they do go to those larger class sizes because they have talked to faculty one-on-one, -on -one, right? Which is a really intimidating thing. Um, they have uh, had discussions in classrooms. They've you know, presented in front of classrooms um, and received feedback from their faculty and their students, right? They've had these real experiences from day one, which you may not get that that one-on-one -on -one attention until down the line, um, you know, depending on your your institution. So there's a lot of benefit to to that experience in a community college classroom. Mm -hmm. I'll throw in the faculty connection. I mean, that Mickey, can you hit the nail on the head? The faculty that teach at a community college want to teach. That's the reason why they're here. They care about the students, but they also live in this community. They've got the connections for internships, for jobs, for transfer. So that's the value add that you're going to get. You're going to have that exposure and access rate right from the start. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think uh, the thing I love about community colleges is the fact that you uh, serve such a wide range of students, all right? So you could have one student who had a difficult time obtaining their high school diploma. They need a lot of work and a lot of assistance and a lot of attention at the college level. And at the other end of the spectrum, you could have a you know, an engineering science uh, major at the community college who may be coming in uh, to the community college having, having taken AP Calculus in high school, AP Physics. Uh, so you have the wide range of students. And the thing that, that I saw when I, you know, worked at the community colleges was the professors were very nurturing. So they were there to meet the st each student where he or she wa was at academically, whether they, you know, needed help getting through algebra or whether they needed help getting through calculus two or differential equations or something like that. So it wasn't a sink or swim environment. You know, the students always received support no matter where they were at, uh, whereas at some large institutions and some highly competitive four-year institutions, there can be a sink or swim attitude. Like, you know, and, and, and on top of that, the student can often get lost in the shuffle. You know, so there's, um, you know, like Mahegan said there, small class sizes. You know, there's, you know, some co uh, colleges where an intro to psychology class could have 350 students in a lecture hall. At a community college, that same course might have, what, 35 students maybe, something like that. So to me, it's all the things we just talked about as far as the quality 
of what's happening in the classroom at the community colleges. And, you know, and the other thing, too, is this. Um, if students sometimes, uh, you know, incorrectly think that the community college education is inferior to that of a four-year school, all you have to do is to look at the four-year colleges out there who are uh, admitting community college graduates with full junior year status. So what does that mean? It means these four-year colleges respect and value the classroom education that those community college students um, have had. All right, let, moving on to the next question here. Not every student wants to spend four years in college, all right? In fact, uh, uh, like we talked about, a sizable number of students who start out at a four-year college never finish. And not every student aspires to become a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or an engineer. Not every student wants to take advanced mathematics or advanced science. Uh, whatever. Yet those same students might be very talented in other areas, like, for example, working with their hands or doing something, uh, you know, very, very practical. So to me, this is another ex very exciting element of community colleges. So does one of you or both of you want to address what's out there for students that don't want to go for four years and might not want to take high-level academic courses in math and science and foreign language? Sure. I guess I can lead off on this one, Mahegan, if you don't mind. Um, I think we've already touched upon this already a little bit, is that the value and question of what it means for higher ed today has changed dramatically. So we are seeing folks questioning, you know, is it worth it to go to college for four years if I can't get a tangible degree right afterwards? So community colleges are well poised because we work with the local economic development groups to stand up a variety of different options that make sense for students, but then also the employers in the immediate region. So we have two-year degrees, which are designed specifically to go to work right afterwards. So if you wanna be in culinary arts or paralegal sciences, or if you wanna work in automotive or be an electrician or be a registered nurse, you can earn a two-year degree and go right to work afterwards. Um, a lot of those jobs are extremely high paying and they beat the average salary level that you see for a four-year degree for certain regions across the country. So that proposition is very strong for students and they get it because it's right in front of them and it's in their community and their employers that have been there a long time. They're nuts and bolts staples that the economy thrives on. We need those positions. We have deficiencies in those right now. We have high demand for healthcare like it's nobody's business. So this is an area that we're working very closely with our students and our employers to provide the best possible pathway. So that happens with two-year degrees, but we also are sending up certificates all the time as well. So those are much shorter <clears throat> that specific four or five, six courses, which are very geared towards one industry, advanced manufacturing, things like that. Um, one of the things that I didn't realize, even being a community college graduate in the state of New York, working at one, how closely the colleges work with their local community to stand up programs that make sense. And what I mean by that is, I'll give an example. Um, our viticulture program is, I love to talk about it because it's a prime example of how New York State two-year community colleges work. So viticulture is the science and technology of winemaking. The Finger Lakes region is known for winemaking. And the economic driver in the area, one of the key ones, as hospitality, tourism, and the wine industry. We've seen you know, storefronts go up, vineyards go up, breweries go up all over the area. And we decided to stand up a degree program and a certificate program. We invested in a capital facility in Geneva, New York, where we offer those two programs. And it's a way that students in the area who wanna stay in the area can get training in a very short period of time and have a ton of employers at their fingertips. At the same time, we've got the winery saying, we need employees like there's no tomorrow. So working with the students in the area and the employers, we're able to provide an option that students can get through and they can step it. They can either do the certificate or they can do a two-year degree and they can go right to work afterwards. And that's a great example of this option that doesn't necessarily serve up the whole four-year traditional go off to college, figure it out, and then afterwards see where it lands. Um, 
Let me just throw in, you know, here, here's some two-year career programs that are offered at some of the uh, community colleges here in New York State, just to name a few. Uh, as Matt mentioned, culinary arts, radiologic x-ray technology, diesel equipment, uh, construction management, veterinary technology, electrician, dental hygienist, fire protection technology, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, registered nurse, wind energy, and turbine, turbine technology. And really, that's just, you know, uh, scratching the surface. There's many, many more that are out there. Uh, the next one, uh, Mahegan, is for you. Can you just kind of talk a little bit about transfer opportunities that exist for community college graduates? And if you would, I'd like you to address, uh, like talk about what the term articulation agreements mean, and also maybe name some of the schools where uh, students you've worked with have been successful in transferring to. Yeah, absolutely. So students come to FLCC and, and any community college for, for a variety of reasons, but the two biggest one are, are career-oriented programs, which we just kind of talked about, and then to transfer, right, to, to take those credits here and transfer those towards a bachelor's degree at a four-year institution. And so some students will do that by taking some classes with us over a semester or a year, um, or they may finish that full associate's degree. And so we work very closely with uh, a lot of the schools in, the, in, in central New York and western New York um, because our students do tend to stay, for the most part, locally, but certainly go all over New York State and, and outside of the state. Um, and so we have articulation agreements, which uh, what that means is that you would start with us and you would tell uh, that local school for your school, I'm, I'm going to come to you. And we have this articulation already set up between FLCC and another institution. And if you finish this full associate's degree in say business, you earn a certain uh, GPA, which that for your school has dictated to us, um, that's going to get you automatically accepted into their program and get you junior status. So ideally, you've got the first two years done of a four-year degree. And so those are great and those are growing. Our four-year partners are very interested in setting that up uh, with us. And so we're seeing more interest in those articulation agreements um, and articulation agreements uh, between uh, uh, just credits, right? So we have also transfer guides. So uh, as I talked about, students change their major. And so we do our best working with our transfer partners um, to advise our students as best we can to transfer to schools like SUNY Brockport and SUNY Fredonia and Geneseo, um, you know, St. John Fisher University, um, schools that are very close to us um, that our schools, are, uh, our students are interested in transferring to. So we also have a lot of just transfer pathways um, because it's not always a linear experience for students. And so um, if students choose their mind or they're unsure, and we have a lot of great transfer guides and resources to advise students. We also have um, our four-year partners will actually come to our campus and they'll sit one-on-one -on -one with a student um, and they'll look at their transcript because the first question that transfer students ask um, is what transfers and the only people that can answer that um, are the individuals at the other side of that transfer opportunity and so those are going to be our, our colleagues at the four-year institutions and they'll sit down with a student and they will advise them they'll tell them this is the best math for you to take when you need to take your math or this is the history you should take um, and they'll advise them on classes here and then what to expect when they transfer and they start building that relationship while they're a student with us right and uh, I think everybody wins in that scenario so students are really making the best of their uh, their time their money and their energy and I think the four-year students benefit because they're now getting our students who are prepared and committed um, to that degree and to that program and to that school and uh, four-year institutions love transfer students right they tend to be a little bit more older right because they're transferring even if you come here right out of college or transferring when you're 20 or 21, uh, you're a little bit more mature, you're focused, um, you know how to navigate a college campus, um, you know how to work with faculty, and so um, you're ready to go, right? You have a plan. And so transfer students bring a lot to the classroom and to those four-year institutions. Um, and we continue to get um, you know, transfer partners, certainly in our area, but even out of state. So some of our um, schools that out of state, I know we have a school in Maine uh, that comes here for our conservation students, right? We have some specialty programs. So students from uh, colleges from other states will actually come and will be interested in our students because of our reputation and because of what our students uh, do in the classroom. 
And so, um, you know, many of our students uh, have a lot of successful transfer stories. So we send students to um, SUNY Brockport, right? So certainly not too far down the road. Um, SUNY ESF is another one. St. John Fisher University is a great partner of ours, a private institution. Um, so we, we really work with a lot of schools in the areas um, to provide transfer pathways and also build relationships. So I can tell a student, Call this person right so they have a name and a face um, when they start on that campus and they can get those answers ahead of time so it's a it's definitely a really great system um, and it's it's always growing ever evolving as we add programs or they add programs and our students only benefit from that okay very good now we're uh, running close on time here and i think uh, this next question matt is going to be uh, a good one for you to answer community colleges operate on what's called an open door or open admission policy all right so matt can you tell us what that means and does the open admission policy pertain to every one of your majors sure um, so we've got about so two me, two minutes matt okay two minutes no yeah. rush so for a community college what open access means is that the student must possess or earn a high school diploma or equivalency prior to starting their degree program in order to matriculate and be eligible for financial aid in order to have degree conferred upon them. So that would be a high school diploma or a GED or task or homeschool equivalency. Now there are selective programs at community college such as RN and nursing. You know, they will require testing and certain course requirements and GPA requirements as well. So those programs can be competitive. And then for any of our students, once they enroll in a degree program, there are requirements in terms of maintaining a GPA, course completion, in order to earn all of those requirements to earn their degree at the end of the road. Okay. And one thing I want to add, too, is just because it might be relatively easy to gain admission to a community college for certain majors, um, you still have to do the work to be able to stay there and graduate from there so getting in the door is one thing but staying in is up to each individual student okay so gee we've covered a lot of stuff today and I think this has been a very very good informative session and hopefully you know for those of you um, it's you know if you weren't familiar with what's happening in community colleges Hopefully after, you know, viewing this podcast, you'll understand that really among all the types of colleges out there, you can't deny that community colleges have to be among the most exciting. They've got all kinds of stuff happening there at, at the community college for all levels of students. Um, and again, like we've gone over in terms of academic quality, in terms of value, uh, pretty tough to beat so you know keep an open mind as you're looking at schools and uh, you know uh, hopefully if you had any misconceptions about community colleges hopefully you now really know the truth about what's happening okay with all of that being said I would like to give a big thank you to our two guests Mahegan and Matt I thank you very much did a great job very informative uh, information here and I appreciate your being here today with us thank you very much guys thanks for having us John okay all right so to wrap things up don't forget that this and all of my previous podcasts can be found at Finger Lakes one and that's the number one dot com as well as on YouTube and that's going to do it for today. I appreciate your joining us, and we will see you the next time. Thank you.